Good morning and welcome to the Microdose Diet. I'm your host, Peggy van de Plage. I'm a former banker and venture capitalist. And now I speak about all things alternative therapy. So today I want to talk about the healthcare system. Uh, I spoke already in the past about the healthcare system, but what I really want to focus today on is how we could improve the healthcare system by including alternative therapy into a traditional way of looking at Western medicine. And, you know, I wrote and spoke quite a bit already about uh, the healthcare system in North America. And if you listen or read uh, to what I, uh, I wrote and, and, and said, um, you know that I'm quite conflicted about our healthcare system. Maybe cynicism, cynical is probably the best way to put it, uh, between the massive conflict of interest, but also, you know, the incoherence of the overall system. Um, I really don't think that the patient's best interests are at the center of our healthcare system. And I think it's not just about not being at the center. I think patient's health is actually an afterthought. So uh, if you want to actually see an extreme example of what I'm talking about, you can watch that great uh, show called Painkiller. I believe it's on Netflix and it's about the uh, opioid crisis in uh, in the US. And it's really, um, I would say, uh, eye-opening in terms of how the system really work, even if... Uh, like me, you had already an idea it was the way, it really pushed it to uh, to the limits. So, but despite uh, this very dire state of affairs in our healthcare system, medical professionals, you know, they still are clout with most patients. There is the power of the white coat. And I think that's a power that is really untapped. And it could really be harnessed to put back patient health and wellness at the center of the equation. So, um, you know, health workers may not be able to change the systematic flows of the healthcare system, but they can use their considerable influence on the people they care for in order to maximize their chances of recovery. So, so that's what I want to talk to you about uh, today, you know, like from the placebo effect, auto-suggestions, psychedelics, obviously, um, but also, you know, like tapping, NLP, visualization. Uh, there are tons and tons of tools that are safe, easy, cheap, if not free, uh, that could really help the patients heal better and faster. And, and considering the power of their authority, uh, it's a huge missed opportunity for everyone, uh, the patients, obviously, uh, the medical professional as well, who I'm sure want to see the patients go uh, better faster, uh, but also the taxpayers, because this, uh, as I mentioned, these alternative therapies are mainly uh, cheap or free. So uh, let's let's go through that. I have a few I want to talk to you about. So the first one is obviously psychedelics. I spoke a lot about psychedelics. I think it's a, it's a fabulous alternative therapy. Um, I uh, do microdosing uh, with psilocybin, which is magic mushroom. And that's really something I highly recommend uh, you look into. So the thing very interesting with psychedelics is that despite the fact that uh, psychedelics have seen a huge re resurgence, you know, like in the last 10 years, what people called uh, psychedelic renaissance, which I think now is more psychedelic gentrification because it's uh, it's really um, going mainstream. Um, these psychedelics are still not studied in health schools. So it leaves tremendous opportunities for improved healing unexplored. And, you know, um, the thing that is very interesting to me is that psychedelics could really usher humanity into an entirely new territory via optimized mental health, improved performance, and an enhanced connection with oneself and others. So actually in my book, more um, the microdose diet, uh, the 90 day plan for more success, more passion, more happiness, five chapters are dedicated to what I call your psychedelic education. And, and this is more than what health professionals 
we learn during their studies based on the, the current curriculum. And that doesn't make any sense. And, you know, right now, hundreds of clinical studies are underway globally. And some are underway with global organizations, some of the, some of the, uh, the departments of veterans affairs in the US, in Canada, and, and the topics are, you know, wide array of topics. It can be addiction, anxiety, arthrosis, clustered headaches, mood disorder, PTSD, stress. So a lot, a lot is happening in the space and billions of dollars have been poured uh, in what has been called really the, the next frontier in healthcare. And you can see actually in other videos, I actually interview people in the space who, who tells us more about the future of psychedelic. But unfortunately, the majority of medical professionals have very limited knowledge of this century old alternative medicine. And despite the fact that the regulations are changing at the speed of light, and there is a tremendous uh, activity in the space. So, so it, it really doesn't make any sense. So, so the beauty of, of psychedelics is really, it's, it's not just the enormous amount of data, uh, anecdotal and scientific, uh, but also the affordability. It is extremely cheap to access psilocybin or magic mushroom uh, of excellent quality. And it's an opportunity as well to displace, you know, expensive, loaded with side effects, um, really symptom managing manuf manufactured prescribed drugs uh, with affordable, natural, cure focused, solution focused, alternative medicine. And, and from my perspective, it's really a no brainer. And that would put the health of patients and their well-being first. So, so incorporating psychedelics in medical curriculums, as well as in health and wellness cabinets, will really benefit our healthcare system and more importantly, the health of patients while managing down the cost. So uh, you can see some MDs um, such as Gabor Maté uh, is a big, big supporter of the use of, of psychedelics for healing. So you see some medical professionals who are talking about it, but there are really few and in between. And the new generation being trained is not even aware of what's going on, at least not of their own volition because it's not in the curriculum. So I had an interview uh, last month or two months ago with uh, Victoria Littman. Victoria is a, is a lawyer, she's a scholar, she's an advisor, she, she's really deep in the space. And uh, from her perspective, the access from the public to psychedelics will be coming from multiple ways. Um, that can be medical, of course, uh, that can be religious, that can be self-administrated, and that will depend, obviously, on the regulations of the different states. Um, but we cannot underestimate the power of the medical establishment, of course, and you want them to be involved sooner rather than later when it comes to the use of psychedelics in healing. So that's the first alternative medicine I wanted to talk to you about because there's so many untapped benefits that are left, um, that are left aside. And again, at a very, very good cost. Uh, the second one uh, I want to talk about, the second alternative uh, therapy or medicine is tapping. Um, I also wrote and spoke about it. And just a quick remember, so uh, tapping is a powerful stress relief technique. And it's, it's very often referred as an alternative therapy for anxiety, PTSD, and other conditions. And the way it works is you tap on your meridian points with your fingertips, and you can really restore the body and mind um, uh, to, to resolve physical and emotional issues. So, so researchers have shown that uh, EFT tapping um, lower cortisol, so that's the stress hormone, by uh, 43%. So it is something that is extremely effective. Um, I'm a huge proponent of tapping meditation, um, especially in combination with microdosing uh, psychedelics. It's really the one plus one equal three. 
I personally work with a fabulous coach, Pam Wright, if you want to look uh, for her. She's based in Australia, actually. Um, and I work with her on a weekly or bi-weekly basis to really focus on my blind spots because tapping is amazing. You can do a lot yourself. Of course, your blind spots are a bit more difficult to work on. Um, so I've seen fabulous positive changes in myself, but also in others. Uh, thanks to tapping. So I can really, really not recommend it more. And uh, there is a very interesting uh, MD, uh, Dr. Kim Deramo. She's uh, she's using tapping to help her patients heal. So um, she uh, she's trained and she used to be an emergency doctor. And as an emergency doctor, it really became clear to her that all of the patients she saw with chronic illness had a component of emotional and mental energies that were keeping their disease state in place. And uh, seeing that, she decided to shift her career and she's now a mind-body medicine physician. So, so she helped patients with a very, uh, very, very large array of conditions, um, anxiety, autoimmune illness, chronic pain, fatigue, migraines, and much more. And, and she's really using her own experience. She had a um, big health issue that uh, she was able to, to resolve, um, but also her experience with tapping and, uh, and medicine to help her clients. And, um, you know, what's very interesting is that tapping is really an ideal tool to help release the pain and the stress. And it is free, obviously. Uh, you can do it with your own fingers. Uh, it is easy, it's safe, it's portable. You always have your hands with you. Um, but nonetheless, this alternative therapy is not used by the traditional medicine uh, medical establishment. Again, despite scientific backing. So uh, this doctor, Dr. Kim Deramo, uh, she recounts stories of using tapping uh, in the emergency room and being able to bring relief to our patients in a few minutes uh, and seeing significant decrease in their pain level. So um, this experience, once again, were due to our own volition. Uh, there is no training, there is no protocol uh, that are in place for health professionals to leverage this tool. So it's, again, another huge missed opportunity for the patients. But again, also for the medical professionals, the system and the taxpayer, these are free tools versus uh, giving uh, pills to people that's going to uh, create side effects. It, it just doesn't make any sense to me. So, um, so that's really the second alternative therapy. And I use a lot actually uh, tapping in combination of uh, microdosing uh, psilocybin in my book. Um, in you know that uh, that will be uh, sold in May, so you have a bit of time for that. Um, but I really, really use these tools because I know they work. And uh, the third tool you know very well, uh, it's the placebo effect. So um, the placebo effect can really be defined as um, a sham medical treatment or a fake medical treatment, uh, such as. Um, tablets, injection, surgery. So, so placebos are used in uh, randomized clinical trials. And it's really in order to test the efficacy of medical treatments. And I mean, you can find hundreds of example of placebo effects. I'm sure you, you know uh, you know already a lot about. Uh, I have one example I absolutely love actually. Um, and uh, it was a study that was made by uh, the Department of Veteran Affairs and Baylor College of Medicine, and it's from 2002, so 20 years ago, kind of. Uh, so in this research, some patients received a knee surgery, the real knee surgery, uh, while others only received a small incision at the level of the knee to make them believe they were operated on. And they knew that. People knew that some will receive a surgery, some will receive a placebo. And uh, basically the punchline is, uh, study finds common knee surgery no better than placebo. So what does it mean? Patients with osteoarthritis of the knee, which is what they were testing, uh, who underwent this placebo surgery, were just as likely to experience pain relief than the ones who got the real deal. 
And um, but what these results don't tell us, and that's something I really want to mention because it's so so important, is how much the doctors themselves may have actually influenced the results. And you know, unconsciously, not not on purpose. And and what I mean is um, practitioners uh, who are you know um, showing empathy, friendliness, and competence favor in their patient the formation of positive expectations. So caring and warm patient practitioner interactions can actually enhance the therapeutic value of clinical encounters when patients' positive expectancy are encouraged and engaged. So you can find studies about that. So, so bottom line, <laughs> to make it uh, very clear, an encouraging medical professional will improve the probability of successful recovery in a patient. So, I mean, what is not to like? And again, may I add it, it is free. Um, but unfortunately, the opposite is true too with what is called the nocebo effect. And uh, so what does it mean for you? work with friendly and supportive medical professional as much as you can, because unconsciously it would improve the probability of uh, faster and better healing. And, you know, it's very interesting because I always hear, or I shouldn't say always, I often hear people denigrating the placebo effect, especially when it comes to psychedelics. And, um, and the psychedelics is very funny because you have centuries of data points, but anyway. Um, and the rationale is we are not sure that the compound psychedelics really works. Uh, psychedelics could be placebos. And personally, so first, uh, if a placebo allows anyone to heal and feel better, I'm all for it. I don't see any issue with that. That's the result that counts. Um, second, hundreds of studies have been demonstrating the actual positive effects of psychedelics. So I'm not sure why this entire uh, conversation about placebo effect. And third, so if it's just placebos, why is it that psychedelics are still out loud in most countries and states? It doesn't really make any sense. So... Um, you know, my point is really, why would the placebo effect be more true for alternative medicine than for prescribed drugs? You know, so, so this whole conversation regarding placebo effects and psychedelics, uh, you know, doesn't really make sense to me. And it's very counterintuitive to complain about the placebo effect. Um, you know, it's obviously the safest and the cheapest way to see improvements. Everyone and his neighbor is talking about mindset, changing our mindset. Well, this is exactly that. It's using the power of our minds, the power of our unconscious to get to the desired health results. And again, due to the importance, power of influence that health professionals have, it is a tremendous, tremendous opportunity to leverage the placebo effect when treating patients. But unfortunately, this option is left again to the practitioner's discretion. While top-down guidance and widespread use would be so beneficial to, to all of us. So again, that's another way to improve our healthcare system using more of the placebo effects. And again, it's easy, it's safe, it's cheap. So it's Again, I don't, I don't really see the, the downside here. And the fourth alternative medicine or uh, therapy I want to, to talk uh, with you about is um, what is called the, the Kue method or uh, autosuggestion. So uh, autosuggestion is really a, a psychological technique uh, that is related to the placebo effect. Keep in mind that the placebo effect is really linked to a sham treatment. I give you a pill, I give you an injection, I give you a surgery. All of that are kind of fake. Um, while autosuggestion is really a form of self-induced suggestion, 
in which individuals guide their own thoughts, feelings, or behaviors to feel better. So, so Quiz had um, a very famous uh, phrase, maybe you know about it. Every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. It is, it, it is a very, very well-known formula that is leveraging the power of the mind for healing. But unfortunately, I have yet to meet a medical professional that is using this easy and free method to maximize a patient's healing. Actually, one of my great friends, she's, uh, she's in the medical field. And I suggested to her and her staff at her clinic um, to, you know, put posters with positive words on healing, affirmations, saying to the patient, oh my God, you're healing so well. And despite the fact that they agree with the value of auto-suggestion, well, they're just not doing it. And I'm just like, why? You might be able to improve, uh, improve the results by, I don't know, 10, 15, 20%. Why wouldn't you want to do that? But anyway, but what I've seen actually is the opposite. Uh, I had a good example with my mother maybe 10, 15 years ago. Um, she has had very, very bad uh, arthrosis, arthritis for decades. And in, uh, when going for a checkup, you know, nothing special. Um, but the, the, the doctor did like some um, uh, scan and MRI and stuff like that. And he, he was looking at the result and he told her, well, I'm so surprised that you're not in more pain and that you can actually live a normal life. I mean, why on earth would a medical professional tell to someone, top of that from that generation who really believe that doctors are gods, uh, that she should be in more pain. I mean, what's going on in your mind? Obviously, as you can imagine, it didn't take long for my mother to start feeling more pain and feel that she could not move the same way she was just because the doctor suggested her that actually she should be in more pain and she should have more, less mobility. And, and that is a great example of negative auto-suggestion that is actually triggered by a health professional. So I personally have been in, I've been extremely fortunate in life um, to be, you know, in great, great physical health. And um, if we exclude the misdiagnosed uh, brain tumor when I was in my teens, but despite the fact that I am in excellent physical health, every time I go for a physical, the doctor is going to put the emphasis on the one or two data points that are good, but not excellent. But you know what? I go there to be told I'm in great health. I'm not going there to be told that there is something that is not perfect. I'm not coming to find problems when there are none, nor do I want to be influenced in order to get sick. And it would be so, so, so easy for medical professionals to harness the power of positive suggestion and auto-suggestions, or at least best case scenario to uh, neutralize their uh, negative suggestions. So instead of pushing thoughts of disease and side effects to patients, push them thoughts of healing, success, great health. So, you know, uh, bottom line, you know, like I, I really, really, really believe in the value of Western medicine, you know, despite its focus on disease versus health, despite its uh, incoherence, uh, despite the massive conflict of interest and the challenge to have access to healthcare. Yes, even in Canada, very, very challenging to get access to healthcare. But however, the patients shouldn't have to choose between alternative and mainstream medicines. One could easily, easily augment the other, improving the results and reducing the cost. So today, patients and medical professionals, they're just left to their own device if they're interested in alternative options. They have to research, they have to learn, they have to train all by themselves. And this is not the way to go. 
And, um, you know, there are many, many other alternative uh, therapies that I didn't mention, actually, um, that could be, you know, very beneficial to combine with really our, our drug first healthcare system. Uh, you can think about hypnosis, uh, you can think about visualization, homeopathy, uh, NLP, acupuncture, breathwork, anyway, meditation, journaling, there are so many that could be actually combine to our current healthcare system. And all of that is extremely cheap and extremely free. And you're improving what you're doing already. I'm not saying you're gonna cure cancer with uh, homeopathy, but if you can help someone visualize uh, better health, if you can help them decrease their level of pain, all of that with tools that are easy, free and safe, why don't we do that? It doesn't make sense to me. We all agree that our minds are super powerful. So let's make the most of them, you know, in a very strategic and beneficial way for every uh, one last of us. So uh, thank you so much for listening. I hope I enticed you to research. I hope I enticed you to include some of these therapies in your life um, because you would get great results. Again, I'm not talking replacing. It is an amazing way to enhance whatever it is you're doing already. So uh, as I said, I'm publishing a book that's called More, The Microdose Diet, The 90-Day Plan for More Success, Happiness, and Passion. And uh, it will be available for pre-order uh, before the end of the year. It will be obviously available on Amazon and every good bookstores. So I hope you're going to be interested in reading it because you will see tremendous results in your life if you do. So thank you so, so much for listening to me. I wish you a fantastic week and I will be back next week. Bye-bye.